In this problem, we're told a hunter on a frozen, essentially frictionless pond uses a rifle that shoots 4.2 gram bullets at 965 meters per second. The mass of the hunter, including his gun, is 72.5 kilograms, and the hunter holds tight to the gun after firing it. Find the recoil velocity of the hunter if he fires the rifle A, horizontally, and B, at 56 degrees above the horizontal. So, two different scenarios, but let's just draw what's going on before and after. Right, so before and after. So what happens before? So we have this hunter, right? So here's our hunter. Um, they're gonna have a gun, right? So here's their, they're gonna be holding some gun on this on this pond, right? So let's just draw it flat. So imagine, I'm just gonna draw a box like this, but this is their gun, right? So this is before, what do we know about what's going on before? So they're both gonna have a mass, right? Well, right, so he's gonna be firing a bullet. So the bullet is the thing that's actually moving. So the, the mass of the person and uh, the gun is combined, right? So their mass is, 72.5 kilograms or yeah kilograms and then there's going to be a bullet the mass of the bullet is going to be 4.2 grams so before they're both not moving right because the bullet's in there and he's not moving either so their velocities are both equal to zero right so velocity we're going to call it v1 and v2 so v2 is going to be the velocity of the bullet v1 is going to be the velocity of our person so m1 and then m2 right so two essentially is the bullet everything to do with the bullet one is just going to be doing with the person and the gun i guess Right, so what happens after? So after, here's our person, um, right? So they're gonna have their gun still, right? So they're standing on their thing, uh, the gun, and then they're gonna fire the bullet. So the bullet's gonna go off, right? So this is right when they fire it, right after they fire it, right? And we know it's gonna travel at 965 um, meters per second. That's the bullet, right? So this thing is gonna travel at that speed, right? And their masses are gonna be the same, right? So M1, 72.5, nothing changes about that. And then the mass of the bullet does not change either. So 4.2 Gs. But what else do we know? So what we're trying to just find for this is the Roy recoil velocity of the hunter, right? So we know the hunter, uh, because he fired this, there's going to be some form of, um, there's going to be a force, right, that pushes him to go this way. So he's going to have some velocity, right? So we can call this V1 final, right? This is V2 final. And we don't know this. This is what we're solving for, right? So before he's just holding the gun, he hasn't shot it, and then he shoots it. The bullet's going to go this way, and he's going to go this way, Okay. So this is just the drawing. Now let's move on to, uh, or well, for the second part, they want you to do 56 degrees above the horizontal, but we'll address that um, after we solve the first part. So uh, the way we're going to solve this is by using uh, the conservation of momentum, right? So the conservation of momentum basically tells us the moment at the beginning, right? So the momentum at the beginning has to equal the momentum at the end, right? And so we, we know momentum equals mv, right? P equals mv. So what that tells us is this formula. V1 or M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final, right? This is the momentum of the first, of the, our guy, right? Of our hunter, plus the momentum of the bullet in the beginning, and then the momentum of our guy at the end, and the momentum of the bullet at the end, right? And so this is the formula we're going to use to solve, right? Because these have to be equal. Why? Because it's law of conservation of momentum. So let's go ahead and solve. So what you should realize right off the bat is that V1 and V2 are equal to zero. Why is that? Right, because they're not moving. So what this tells us is this whole side's gonna be zero because if it is zero times the mass, whatever it is, doesn't matter, plus zero, this whole thing's gonna go to zero. So really we have zero equals M1 V1 plus M2 V2 final, right? And I went ahead and labeled all these, remember in the beginning. So we know M1 is just the mass of our person. M2 is the mass of the bullet. V2 final is 965 meters per second, right? The final velocity of the bullet. And then M V1 final, or just v1 final is what we're solving for right in the beginning we don't know what that is we're going to try and solve for it by plugging in the numbers so let's go just go ahead and do it right we just got to plug in so m1 the mass of our person and our gun 72.5 multiplied by v1 final plus m2 which is the mass of the bullet right and notice how it's in grams so what you want to do is convert it into uh, kilograms right we need it to be uh, same units so we know there's a thousand grams for every one kilogram so you can just divide it by a thousand and give it to you in kilograms so if you divide this by 1,000, you'll get 0 0.0042. Yeah, so 0 0.0042 kilograms. Uh, that's going to be M2, right? Because we need it in kilograms. So 0 0.0042 kilograms. Uh, we actually don't need to put the units. So 0 0.0042 and then multiply by V2 final, which is 965 meters uh, per second. So now we've got this. Uh, we can just go ahead and solve, right? So move this to the other side, and then we're going to divide by this. So minus and then multiply these together 0 0.0042 times 965 if you do that you'll get 4.053 and so it's negative because we move it to the other side we have to subtract 
So that equals 700 or 72.5 times V1 final divide. So do 4.053 divided by 72.5, and you're going to get V1 final equals negative, right? Because we have a negative times or negative 0 0.0 or 0, sorry, 0, 0559 uh, and so on, right? So I'm just going to round to. Uh, I'm going to round this to a 6, right? So 0 0.056, and then it's going to be meters per second, right? Because this is the velocity. So what does this mean? So our velocity is going to be 0 0.056 meters per second, but the negative specifies the direction, right? Because we say right is positive, left's negative. So therefore, uh, they're going to be traveling 0 .05, 0 0.056 meters per second to the left because it's negative. So you would just say 0 0.056 meters per second. And they didn't specify the direction, right? He didn't specify shooting it right or left. So we don't want to say right or left. We just want to say opposite the direction of the bullet, right? Because positive was the direction we set the bullet to go. So negative would mean it's going in the opposite direction. So we just say opposite uh, the direction of the bullet. Okay, so this right here will be A, right? So 0 0.056 meters per second in the opposite direction of the bullet. So that's the V1 final. Now let's move to the next part. So the second part has us basically do the same exact thing, except for now, instead of it being horizontal, right? This was horizontal, right? He just shot it straight. My drawing didn't look that well, but essentially now he's going to be shooting it, right? Imagine it's like this. Imagine this was straight in the beginning. My drawing was bad, but now he's going to be shooting at 56 degrees ab above the horizontal. And what does this tell us, right? So essentially you don't have to worry, even though they give you uh, 56 degrees, right? It's a it's at an angle. You don't have to worry about the Y component, and I'll explain that in a minute why that is. We only have to worry about the X component, right? And so essentially what we got to do is just instead of doing um, uh, the velocity, whatever it was, 965, we're going to replace it uh, with uh, the X component because it's, now it's at 56 degrees. So how do we find the X component of the velocity, right? So let's just redraw it. Imagine this is where the gun is going to be shot at 56 degrees above the horizontal. And this is 965. So we're trying to find the X component, right? And then this is the Y component, but we don't have to worry about it. So how do we solve for um, X? You should know how to do this, right? We know the cosine of an angle, 56 degrees. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? We labeled the adjacent X, so adjacent, which is X, over 965. So just multiply by 965, and you're going to get cosine. So essentially, our V2 final, instead of being 965, right? because this was straight, now it's at a horizontal. So instead of it being that, it's going to be 965 multiplied by the cosine of 56. So that's the only thing that really changes in this problem, because now it's fired at an angle. So we have to take into account uh, the angle, right, when calculating the x component. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to rewrite it up top, though. So 965 times the cosine of 56. So now instead of it being that, v2 final is 965 times the cosine of 56, OK? And so now what we can do is just use the same exact equation. Everything's the same except for this variable is different, right? Because nothing else changed. So plugging it in, 0 equals 72.5 times v1 final plus 0 0.0042 times, and then v2 final is now 965 times the cosine of 56. So go ahead and do this, right? So do 965. Right, I'm going to move this to the other side, so it's going to be minus, uh, do 0 0.0042 times 965 times the cosine of 56, or the cosine of 56, sorry. Uh, and if you could do that, you're going to get 2.2664 and so on. I'll just write the full thing. Equals, and then this part right here, right? Because we just moved this to the other side. 72.5, V1 final. And then we can just divide by this, 72.5. Right, so go ahead and do that. And you're going to get V1 final is equal to negative 0 0.03126 and so on. Uh, I'm just going to round to 0 0.0313, so 0 0.0313 meters per second. So it's the same thing as this, right? This opposite direction, right? So you would say 0 0.0313 meters per second and then opposite. And so it's going to be opposite the horizontal component of the bullet. So horizontal, right? So horizontal component, you can write it out. So horizontal component of the bullet, 
But essentially, now I'm gonna explain why we didn't take into account the Y. So we don't need to take into account like the vertical direction in our calculations. And be, this is because there's two different forces acting in this direction, which is gravity and the normal force. So what this means is the momentum is not gonna be conserved in this direction, right? So the normal force is essentially going to oppose this force, right? So the force that forces us back in the Y direction, right? And so essentially we don't have to take into account. So essentially it's just gonna be this right here. So V1 final is gonna be, uh, 0 0.0313 meters per second opposite the horizontal component of the bullet, right? So your answer to A was 0 0.056, and then this one's 0 0.0313 meters per second. But yeah, so this is your answer to A, this was B, and yeah, so hopefully you found this useful.